so honored to be called your own and we thank you for the privilege of being in your presence tonight. Thank you, Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, please have your way. Do us good. We are tired of where we are. Shift us. Shift us. That is our request tonight. That is our request. That's our heart desire. Oh God, shift us. We will give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. I'm sure the amen can be louder and better. Hallelujah. John, let's give the Lord a big hand, a big hand, a big hand. And please help me, help me hug your sister or your brother as the case may be. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's an honor for me to be hosting all of you under God this weekend. And I want you to know that when God gives a word, he releases the spirits into the atmosphere. So get ready to shift. And like my daughter said, the only place you are permitted to shift to is forward and upward. You're not permitted to go down. Hallelujah. We're glad to have the bishop again and we thank God for you, sir. Thank you. Over the years, over 30 years, you've been a pillar under God for the Royal Ladies Fellowship. I thank God for you. After the ministration, I'm going to be acknowledging all the various chapters. We thank God for traveling mercies. In the last two weeks, in the last one month, we've been praying. And for some days now, we've been fasting. Even today, I had to fast for you. So I know that God is up to something. This is not a carnival. This is not a fun fair. We're not here to joke. We're not here to... Mm -mm. We're here to have something of eternal value. And I bet you on God, something will happen to you. Something good will happen to you. We thank God for all the men that are here. We are honored to have you. And the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. The theme for the conference is shift. It's a one word or it's a command. It's not an advice. It is a command. It's a spiritual command that will be effective in the realm of the physical. And when we talk about shift, it has many, many meanings. It means to change, to transfer, to transport, to move, to relocate, and so on. I'd like to provoke you tonight by starting this way. Every human being lives in seasons. You don't live your life in years. You live in seasons. For instance, as a woman, a season of your life is when you're single. A season is when you're married. A season is when you become a mother or a grandmother. A season is when you are employed, maybe with the government and all that. There's a season you move into, a season of your retirement, when you decide to refire. Life is not lived in years. Life is lived in seasons. Please allow me to pause because... We are being watched from around the world. Let's celebrate our you know, um, internet audience. Dubai, different places, not just Agape. Different protégés of mine are watching us. So life is lived not in years, but in seasons. And where do I find that in the Bible? Psalm 1, verse 3. He shall be like a tree. Psalm 1, verse 3. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. Take note of that pronoun. I thought it would say it's I-T-S. Talking about the tree. It says his. 
H I S, his fruit in his season. So this scripture is referring to the man or to the woman. We're not talking about gender here, not the tree. Life is lived in seasons. There is no everlasting man. You are not everlasting. Every man has a tenure. No matter how long. The incumbent administration in Nigeria, the tenure is ending. When it first started, maybe eight years ago, you thought it was a long time. Just like you gain admission into a school and then you're saying, oh, when will I finish? Before you know it, one year is over. That's why people say, oh, may I not? Oh, because I say, I'll pay you next month. Before you know it, the month is over. Every human being has a tenure. And let me just drop this. One of the, the morning, what do you call it when you rent a house? One of, thank you, the rent that you pay for your space on earth, one is gratitude. The other one is destiny fulfillment. There are other ones. And a lot of people are owing. They are owing because they remain on the same spot. That's just by the way. <laughs> there are things packaged in you and seasons are timed. I think that's the top thing I'm seeing tonight. Seasons are timed, just like you have winter, summer, autumn, you know. You will know that, oh, this is April. By now, winter should be over. Seasons are timed, timed, timed. They come and they end. Seasons come and seasons end. Because seasons are seasonal. No season lasts forever. Time is an inelastic product. Time is an in... I'm teaching. So if you want to write, that's fine. Time is an inelastic product. You know your rubber band is elastic. You can pull it. When you say something is elastic, you can pull it. But when you say something is inelastic, you cannot pull it. 24 hours is 24 hours. You cannot add to it. Even if you are the richest human being on earth or you are the most anointed. It's a product, but it is not elastic in nature. <laughs> I'm taking you on the journey tonight. Every other resource is used within time, but time is inelastic. It is possible to still have resources when your time finishes. It's possible for you to still have resources on your inside that you have not deployed and your time is over. I'll show you that in the scriptures. Remember Elisha, he died in 2 Kings. But he still had the anointing. He still had resources on his inside. But his time was up. And heaven decided that, look, we don't need this anointing here in heaven. So a man died, or a man had to die, and then his, there was a war. And the man's corpse had to be thrown in fear, in pandemonium, to Elisha's grave. And the residue of the resources inside Elisha raised the man. So it's possible for you to still have resources on your inside and your season is over. That's the reason you cannot afford to allow anybody waste your time. Because your time is your life. 
That is why you cannot afford to let anybody waste your time. Anyone that succeeds in wasting your time is wasting your life. Seasons are seasonal. Time is an inelastic product. You cannot add to 24 hours. And it is possible for you to still have products on your inside that you have not deployed and your season is over. That's one of the reasons why this theme is so important. Shift. Hmm. Shift. I'll be looking at two scriptures tonight. The first one is Genesis chapter 38 and the second one will be Genesis chapter 29. There are two powerful stories there. These are my foundational scriptures in the confine of the time that I have tonight. Genesis chapter 38 and Genesis chapter 29. I'm going to read maybe two or three verses from Genesis chapter 38 and then we will now dwell in Genesis chapter 29 when I'm rounding off. Let's go to Genesis chapter 38. The Bible says, verse 6, Judah took a wife for her, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar, and her, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, whereof he slew him also. Then our story begins. Said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, till Shelah my son be grown, for he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Now verse 27. And it came to pass in the time of her travail, that behold, twins were in her womb. It came to pass when she traveled that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying, this came out first. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out and she said, how has that broken forth? This bridge be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Pharez. And after what came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand and his name was called Zara. Praise the Lord. Tama means the palm tree. Every aspect of the palm tree is useful. Tama had plans. Tama had purposes. But marriage disfigured her. She got married to the wrong person. And her destiny <laughs> needed a shift. But before that shift came, let's see what happened to her. There are three major ways by which a human being can be programmed. I told you I'm teaching. And you might, in the course of this teaching, notice some particular things in your life. I need to let us go through this so we'll know the reason why we need a shift. Or for some of us, like me, shifts. There are three major ways by which we were all programmed. Number one, verbal programming. Hmm. If you're a parent here, you need to listen to me doubly. Verbal programming. A lot of us were not aware when we were growing up 
that we were being programmed. Verbal programming. That was the first thing that happened to Tamar here. Judah said to her, please leave this house. Go to your father's house and remain there. Remain in widowhood. Return to where you were picked up from. When you got married, people bade you bye-bye. Maybe your chief bridesmaid, maybe the children that were in your bridal train, your neighbors, the heirs with your parents, when we came to take you. Because the Jewish culture is very close to the African culture. And now, somebody very important in her life said to her, return. Verbal programming. I am a victim of that. Verbal programming. You may not even be aware that you were being programmed. When people look at you and they call you names that make you second guess your destiny. Sometimes people that have authority over you, your parents, your pastor, your imam, your teacher, somebody that has an authority over you. You hear it every time. You can never amount to anything. Maybe your spouse looks at you and says, look at other husbands or look at other wives. Can't you see how they are managing their marriages? And you don't know that you have been programmed verbally. Do you know that after Judah spoke those words, Tamar, acted them out. She returned to her father's house. Verbal programming is what you had or what you were told when you were growing up. And when I say when you were growing up, it doesn't mean when you were a kid. You can even be now. The doctor tells you, you can never have a child. It's verbal programming. What are being released into the air? That's why you need a shift. Somebody looks at you and tells you, you look like a parallelogram because you don't have bum bum. And it sticks to, with you for 30 years. Somebody tells you, it's your junior sister that can matter in quarters that matter. Look at you, you can never amount to anything. Verbal programming. It happens in churches where the pastor is manipulative. Some of you, your stepmother raised you and these were the words. Some of you, it's not even your stepmother. It may be your mother. A few weeks ago, while I was privileged to preach here, I spoke about a lady, I think she's in, she's in church, that told me that her mother said, one day the woman was angry, and she put a, the cover of a bowl on the floor and said, in your life, oh, Marie, something you can read the joke, oh, you read the joke. And before she came to this ministry, that was the pictorial image of her life. Go read the joke. Who programmed you verbally? Whoever says anything negative to you that you gave a second thought and it is still, once in a while it comes. That's all. The promotion you want to do. He said it all. You may not know, but they are, they are programming you. Sometimes you even program yourself looking at your neighbor or looking at your friend, and then you look at yourself, you think, everybody has left me. And I'm going to be ministering around, that's what the Holy Ghost really impressed on my heart. I'm going to be coming against the spirit of delay in this meeting tonight. If your mates have left you behind, or your children's mates have left them behind, anything that represents delay, you are not where you are supposed to be. That's why God called for this conference. We're not here to show off nothing. We're here under God. 
You're very serious about it. It's a spiritual event. Who programmed you verbally? Who spoke against you? Who typed something on Facebook and that has now become, almost become your reality? Who looked at you and called you a pig? Having raped you or having slept with you? Who looked at you because your marriage broke and said to you, look at you, you couldn't even keep a home? You think you shrugged it off that it doesn't matter, but you remember it. Who said what? It was a powerful Genesis chapter 1, beginning from verse number 1 to verse number 31. And God said it, and God saw it, and it was the first day. And God said it, and God saw it, it was the second day. Everything God said, God saw. And now scientists are telling us that words do not die. Words bounce around. That's why you must learn to possibilitize the mentality of your children. And you don't allow them to go to school and be verbally programmed wrongly. And the teacher is telling them nonsense just because your child. I was in class yesterday. They were teaching us music and all that. I didn't understand one thing that the man was talking about. I was just staring. But does that make me a failure? No, I'm an expert in other areas. So that your child does not understand mathematics does not mean that that child is a failure. Stop verbally programming your children wrongly. It never leaves. Somebody called me a name in secondary school, Form 4. It took God for me to get over it. I had to speak to my husband about it and then he began to reprogram me. I, I will do things to show that that thing affected me. I didn't know it affected me that much. One of my protégés said one day she stood up in class and somebody looked at her and said, Oh, Lord Muraro. It took her 40 years to get over it. 4 0. Verbal programming. The second one, let me not spend too much time. The second one is modeling. Modeling. You see why we need a shift. Who modeled what to you? When you were growing up, whether as a little child, or as a teenager, or even as an adult. That's why you must be careful, the tribe you belong to, the circle, because there is no prayer or fasting that can handle it. You will look like what you look at. You will look like what you look at. If you can behold it, you can become it. What has been modeled to you? Wrong marriage? A man must slap his wife or beat his wife? A woman's life should be totally dependent on the husband until the man is killed. You can't help him. A man must be insulted because that's the same way your mother was insulting your father till the man had a stroke. Or as a man, no woman can come and be dictating to me. What? Even when you are dying and you are silly and stupid, you don't listen to your wife. Because one, your father didn't listen to your mother. Or two, your mother manipulated your father so much you were watching as it was being modeled. You vowed that no woman will be allowed to do this to you. And in my village, they say, if you close your eyes for bad people to pass, when good people pass, you will not know. Modeling. Who modeled something to you? And that's telling us also, when we flip the coin, what are you modeling to your children? If it took me years to get over the things I went through as a child, maybe that's one of the reasons I'm very passionate about womanhood. That's what the Holy Spirit breathed upon. Because that's what God does. Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 12. You thought it for evil, but God converted it. Baby. Model. And number three. Particular incidents. Things that happened. Maybe to you. Maybe to people that programmed you. Go back 
to your father's house and, and remain there. Just stay there. Who programmed you? How did you get to where you are today? Some of you, you didn't know. The ideas you have about money, wealth today, is because of the way you were programmed. Ah, we thank God, though. We, we may not have money in this house, but at least we have love. And you don't know that poverty was being programmed into you. <laughs> Do you want to kill me? So buy you another iPad. Does money grow on trees? You may not know, but you have been programmed for poverty. Your parents, in their innocence, they didn't know they were harming your destiny. So now you say, yeah, hey, it's not money. Money is not everything, really. Even the rich people are crying. I prefer to cry in a Lamborghini. <laughs> than on a bicycle. You see, they just be doing, it's not money that is everything. Really? So why are you always in traffic every Monday? What are you looking for? Anointing, Abby. Programming, wrong programming. Tell your neighbor you need a shift. Mental shift, spiritual shift, physical shift, health shift, psychological shift. You need a shift. Some of you are too timid. You are begging the devil. So when you see people that, because we all have two kinds of lives given to us by God. Number one is your lived life. Number two is your unlived life. When we see people that have understood how to live their unlived life, we envy them. We try to pull them down. We say all sorts of things about them. But do you notice that since you have been talking against them, they keep rising. I remember one day, Bishop was preaching here and he said, those of you that are abusing the first lady and saying she's umbrella. She knows every nook and cranny of the, of Asa Rock. You, have you seen the gates? With her umbrella. Elevated people will always be criticized by frustrated people. programmed you. You need a shift. Remain as a widow. Remain as a school sat holder. Remain as grade two. You will still retire. Remain. Says who? Maybe one of the reasons I went back to study law at 60 is to inspire you because I don't even plan to practice with it. I'm blessed. Although I really wish that I had been called to buy now. Because I want to back on by now that tribuna is out, you can imagine how much I will have made. But don't worry, there will be another election now. Says who? Live till you die. You are retired and so? Life begins, forgotten that Bishop said it, between 60 and 80 the most productive years of your life. So what's going on? You need to shift. I knew it before I left the house that I would not be able to finish this message. But change, shift happens only because of two things. Anytime there's going to be a change, Psychologists have agreed over what I'm about to tell you now. Theologians, they believe in what I'm about to tell you now. Scientists believe. They hardly agree. These three people, they are the three people that, that rule the world. Scientists, theologians, that is pastors, you know, religious people, and psychologists. They defound so many things. But on this particular one that I'm about to tell you, they agree. They agreed that you are what you think about. Is that not the Bible? Genesis chapter 6. Let's go downstairs. Otherwise, nothing will be able to stop them from accomplishing what they have imagined. Ephesians 3.20 is able to do above, exceeding. That word is not exceedingly. Exceeding. Abundantly. 
That's the adjective now. Abundantly above all that we ask or think. God respects your prayer, but he also respects your, th your thinking. Whatever you think constantly will happen to you. Job said, what I feared has happened. There are two major ways by which change comes. Number one is what we call spaced repetition over time. You keep repeating it. Two times one, two, two times two, four, two times. After some time, you will not need to be counting your finger before you know it. I won't go into that. That's coaching. Repetition, repetition, repetition. After some time, there will be a change. There will be a shift. The second one is what you call sudden emotional impact. And it's always negative. Something happens. Wham! And it's negative. Before September 11, America did not take airports, even the world did not take airport um, security this way. Now you want to travel, you must remove everything in your pocket. You must raise your hand. In Ghana, you, is it Ghana? I don't know. I think it's a Rwanda. You don't raise your hand, you put it like this. Before a machine, you remove your shoe. You remove this one. You carry your bag. It goes like that. It wasn't like that before. It was September 11. Sudden emotional impact. And you may not acknowledge it, but that's what has happened to some of you. When you suddenly woke up and say, hey, so this man is not what he says he is in this marriage. It's always in the negative. Ah, oh, so this can happen to me. You wake up, you start finding your life. Thank God I have a job. Oh, is this what will have happened? You start repackaging your life. Oh, so they can sack people. I thought I'm, they are whatever. Ah, what can I do? Let me start pigri. That's what happens. Something happens that wakes you up. So you say, ah, hey, hey. So, is this how life goes? Ah, Jesus. Sudden emotional impact. That was what happened to Tamar. Her husband died. And then the father-in-law sent her packing. She shifted. Who could have thought that there was a set of twins inside Tamar? If not for what happened to her, I love God. I love the Bible. All things work together for good. To them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That thing that happened to you and you are saying, God, why me? Can you please shift and understand that that's the purpose? It came to shift you. That friend that disappointed you came to shift you. Maybe you thought this message would go on another way today. I'm almost done. Things that happen to you are further filtered and they happen to shift you. That person that disappointed you, if you would just look very well, it was meant to shift you. You have tarried for too long on this mountain. It's time to shift. Even in Yoruba land, they say, when you stay for too long, you know, those days we didn't have toilets. We didn't have um, WC and all that. So you go to the bush and there you, you poo. If you stay there for too long, as some of you still do, is when you travel along Elisha Road. <laughs> they, is this Tommy? And I don't have window. I don't have Imodium. At least I've done it before. That's why I know how it works. They say, if you stay for too long, that's when you'll be hearing flies. Some of you, the flies of life are hovering around your life. You need to shift. You've tarried for too long. Don't stay there till you tear. Shift. Know when to say goodbye. Know when to change. Your husband has been begging you over a matter. 
he messed up. Or your wife. Since the women's conference, I'm speaking more to them. Ma be no now. Ah ah begged you. Even prostrated. Did everything. Sent a friend to beg you. You see? Let me tell you something, madam. Let me apmole a teloko. After begging or what? After or no? And you don't accept. The next one is embarrassment. Go and do your worst now. Am I the first person to, to impregnate somebody? It's wrong, but that's what happens eventually. The man has been begging you and begging you and begging you and begging you and begging you. Even if you are the breadwinner, you better accept it. When you see me move away from my notes, it's because I have a lot there. Let me begin to close. Genesis chapter 29. We see two sisters there. Leah. We read that scripture. It's a lot. I wish I could read everything. We read that scripture and then we just gloss over it. We don't have the time to read it. But please listen. Two sisters. Same father. I don't know whether they were same mother, but at least same father. When Jacob got to Levi, he wanted Rachel. Because Rachel was, like the Bible says, tender-eyed, beautiful. Rachel was beautiful, good-looking. That's not right, but please permit me. This is an in-house meeting. Now, Leah, Rachel was tender eyes. She was beautiful. Very attractive. Thank you, Barista. But Leah was not. So, remember, thank you so much. I like to walk on my feet. So, you know the story. Jacob was deceived and married Leah, or was forced to marry Leah. The Bible says that it was in the money that he realized. I don't understand. Did he not talk before the sex? What are you talking about here? Married people. You won't know your husband when he's sleeping with you. Did she not touch? What? What happened? Remember, he cheated. Life. You saw it. You will repeat in a race to power. So if all you know is Talk ill about people. When people visit you in your house, all you do is talk about people, bring them down. Wait, they gossip with you, they will gossip about you. You know it now. You think you are a good person now. The person they are talking about is the bad one. You are kidding me. Is it not this life? Let's leave that. Anyway, Jacob said, I'm so much in love with Rachel. I must marry her. And then he married her. You know this story. And then we see the product of polygamy. The evil of polygamy in this scripture. So Leah will give birth. And rather than genuinely name the child, he will say, I have given birth to a son. I have given birth to two sons. Now my husband will like me. Even the one he called Judah. I have given my husband six boys. Now he will like me. Whereas Rachel. Was it Rachel? Yes. Whereas Rachel wanted what Leah had children. Leah wanted what Rachel had. Husband's love. Her husband loved her. Every woman wants her husband's attention. Every woman wants to hear from her husband, I love you, I just love you, you are the only sugar, you are the only this. She's blushing, she's happy. So you would think that should have been okay. But no. It was what her sister had that she wanted. This one too, six boys. If there's any woman here that has four boys or six boys, you know how you feel? You're able to do shakara one for me, girl. You know, you 
be doing as if you are the alpha and omega of babies. You know how you do it now. If it's six guys, you know how you will do it. I be alone, titi, titi. You did not shout. You know, you will not really say, but your action. But in this African culture, boys, ah, how many children? Ah, four boys, so long, but one me rent so my lawyer ring, give me, me rent so. It's silence, but we know it. Thank God, Bishop gave me the truth. I'm grateful. So you see, six boys, she was still peeping and looking at what her sister had. Is that not what happens among women? And that's what keeps us stuck. And we cannot shift. She's carrying that bag. How can I have it? And you have no idea how she got the bag. I was telling my daughter, somebody gave me a bag some time ago and put the receipt inside. Pastor, when I saw the receipt, I felt like going to the shop to collect the money. <laughs> I must not even say it inside the microphone. Kilo, about the phone, me, bag. And that's the fourth bag the person will give me. I feel like telling, it's, it's, and he's a man. It's a mama for me, bag him all. And you will see that bag, and that's what you will need Panadol for. Because your sister has six sons. But you, you have your husband's love. And you are never appreciative of what you have. It's what your sister has that you are looking for. You need a shift. God has blessed you with six sons. One of them is even Judah. The Bible says, praise awaiteth thee, O God, in Judah. Judah, powerful name. But no, rather than be thankful unto God, it is what your sister has that you'll be looking at. Until there is a quarrel. Some of us need psychological shift. You are too petty. You cannot be mighty and petty at the same time. You are too petty. You are too envious. You are too jealous of people. You need a shift. I need a shift. Some of us, we can watch African magic for three hours, but to pray in tongues for 30 minutes is a problem. We need a shift. Some of us, if somebody trusts you with money, it's a problem. Do not be looking for how to explain the reason why you had to spend that money. You need a shift. Some of you will say, please, my husband, can I just have one million? Era? I'll give you on Monday. And they'll be calculating the way by which you can cheat. You say, is it not my husband? I'm supposed to spend this money. That's what we call lack of integrity. My husband is here. I will first return it then. I will not be using style to sing in the house. Until he sends me something. But at least I will first return it. That's what we call integrity. Some of you, you are so disloyal. You cannot be trusted. It is what you are eating now that you remember. Disloyalty is witchcraft. Some of you, you are ungrateful. The person that held your hands and taught you the ABC of life, now you have arrived. You are a professor of life. You have forgotten. You need a shift. As I close today, The Lord has x-rayed our lives. You know where you need your own shift. I know where I need my own. I spent 43 minutes talking to you today. I say I have like two minutes or so. Or let me give myself five more minutes because I want to minister. For some of you, you are keeping malice with your helpers. How do I mean? The person that did you evil, 
you did not know that God orchestrated it so that the twins on your inside can come out. He sent me out of the house. Sent me out of the house. Instead of Tamar sitting down and wailing by the rivers of Babylon. No. She was always watching the news. And one day she heard that Judah was coming. She changed. She put off her widow's garments. The things that were disturbing her. Because some of us, he correct us and correct us and correct us. No. No matter how great you are, you cannot see your own back. It's people that will see it for you. And Job chapter 5 and verse number 12. Happy is the man whom the Almighty corrected. If somebody tells you you are wrong, you should be grateful. It is a blessing that you have someone that can correct you. You have what the cars call brake system. Otherwise, you'll be prone to accidents. Nobody can tell you you were wrong. I had a meeting with my children recently. And I shifted. Because the literates of the 21st century, remember, are not the people that cannot read or write. They are the people that cannot unlearn and relearn. The children are talking, you know, I don't want to listen. When you are old, you will be alone. First Kings chapter 1. And David was old and cold. But there are people like that. Like my husband would say, it is the child you nurture that will nourish you in the evening of your life. Your children are saying, we don't like the way you talk to us. He said, that's how God created me. I used to say, like, say it like that too until I relent. If you continue like this, shift. Just man is telling you, I don't like this thing that you are doing. You need to work on your tummy. You say, you saw me like that before you married me. Oh, really? Church members cannot tell you. People cannot tell you. The only one that God has placed in your life to tell you, you are fighting. We cannot correct you in the choir. The last time we corrected you, for two weeks, you didn't come for the other. Nobody can correct you. Your wife cannot correct you. Your children cannot correct you. What a miserable life. You know, Paul said, of all men, we are most miserable. It's possible to be miserable and you will not know it. You cannot admit when you are wrong. Nobody can tell you. But I want to minister to some of you because this ones we need to pray about them. But I want to minister to some of you. So is day your womb. But it's not looking like it. By reason of what has been happening in the last three years, three and a half years, five years, seven years. But I'm telling you, I'm a woman of the spirit. You have twins. When we talk about twins, some of it may be, it may be a business and a ministry. For some of you, it may be entertainment world. And, but it's not one. What I'm saying is not one, two. Some of it's a book and there's something. Twins in your womb. I'm going to lead you to pray three prayers today. I see shifts this weekend. You didn't come from Lagos for your time to be wasted. No, you did not. There is something on your inside that should have been bathed. But something is blocking it. You don't know what to do. You are dwelling too much on hearts. My father-in-law sent me out. Everybody has an excuse. Everybody has... Things you'll be justified, that's why you are behaving like that, but not Tamar. Every part of my life should be profitable. My father in law did this, but I refuse to be stopped. Twins on my inside, twins only five ladies. I think five scholars will help me check that out. Or four in Matthew chapter one, 
women were put in the genealogy of Jesus, Tamar was one of them because she shifted. Or she was shifted. I don't have the time. I will have told you three more things that you can use to shift. I leave that to the bishop tomorrow. Three major things. Tools, instruments. But I want us to pray. When I was coming into this year, the Lord told me, don't joke with thanks and tongues. So you see me in the bathroom. You see me even in class. Because the Lord instructed me. In 2023, do not joke with thanksgiving. Thanks and tongues. Bulldoze everything. Either with gratitude or with thanks. Have I blessed you tonight? Be upstanding. It's 6.38. We are living at 7. Latest. Now, drop your Bible. Drop everything. You know who you are. But I want you to pray. Let me guide you with the first prayer. <laughs> this is a very dangerous prayer. When God begins to answer, don't say, ah, it was um, FFA that said we should pray it, oh, it will end in praise. <laughs> you know that Tamar was very comfortable. She was married. Everything was fine. Everything was good. Until she was shifted. Even after her husband died, she was still comfortable. They were still feeding her in the house. She was still Mrs. Maybe Judah or Mrs. whatever. Until she was pushed into destiny. How would she have become the matriarch in Jesus' lineage? This is a very dangerous prayer. I'm praying it for myself too. Father, look at my life and shift me by all means. It, there will be no evil, don't worry. God is faithful. Some of you, you are too comfortable where you are. You need to have sword by now. Whether you are online or you are on site, I want you to pray, Father, look at my life. Ah, Makoko. Aye, Mio. Oluwa, Mommy. Mommy, Bushif. Be Oba, Mommy. Marry Batisha. Be Oba, Mommy. Aye, me, I do. She be one of Aye, Mio. Oluwa, Mommy. Mommy, we have 20 more minutes in this service. I want to take five minutes for you to pray. Pray in tongues if you don't know how to pray. Pray pray, 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 pray in the spirit. Whoever should not be in my life, remove any relationship. That I'm trusting that I should have outgrown. Oh God, people that are doing me and I don't know, remove. Be Oba Mami. Maribo Shefe. Be Oba Mami. Aye, me adunwo. She be wala moko. I gave me your mommy, mommy,
tell the Lord, Father, I'm grateful for what you have done, but I'm tired of where I am. Take me to the shift me, God. Whatever you heard, when you told FFA about this theme, Baba, do it. Shift me to the next level, the next season. Shift me, shift, 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 shift. Pray, oh, please pray. We have like two more minutes. Shift me. Shift me to the next level. Shift me to the next level, don't you? Can you shift me to the next Shift my husband to the next level. Shift! Shift! Shift, Lord! Shift them! Shift my business, shift my ministry to the next level. Have your way, Lord. Jesus, we have prayed. If you think there is any form of delay in your life, oh. step out, touch the altar, and go back. That's the instruction. Just touch the altar, and go back, go back, go back, hurry up. Touch and go. Don't pray. Touch and go. That's the prophetic instruction. Every form of delay in achievements, in ministry, over your children, over every aspect. Just touch, touch, touch and go. Remove the whatever. If you, any part of the altar, touch and go. I didn't say you should pray. I'm praying for you. I'm standing in the gap for you. Every form of delay. A lecturer is trying to delay you. Somebody is trying to distort your destiny. Every form of delay on this altar. The great God of Adejumo intercepts. Touch and go, touch and go, touch. Everybody, touch, 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 touch and go. of time but I just think in my spirit to bring up the bishop he's the highest spiritual authority in this place even me I need I need prayers and if it's possible for you to be on your knees when he's praying if it's possible when once you notice he has stepped into that prophetic pool please. it's an honor to serve you I'll come back when we're closer to give you some I can, I can, I can see a wind blowing. The two things that blow into your life, one is the wind is going to break the yokes. Then, because the wind is the strength of an eagle, that same wind we give you speed in life in the name of Jesus. I stand today on the authority of the word of God that we have heard. Jehovah God we have an angel to tell us you sent your servant to infuse into us the word we need for the next phase of our lives and we are ready to take a move. Jehovah, let there be a shift. 
Lord, let there be a shift. The Bible says all things work together for our good. Whether good or evil. She told us anything that happened to us. It is so that we can shift. Scripture said it. Is that all things work together for our good. For those who love him. And those who are called according to his purpose. We are not there. We are heading towards the place called there. I stand in my office. Let the wind of the Holy Ghost push you to the next phase. I ask the, the wasted years. According to what we had in the beginning. The wasted years. The years that the canker worms and caterpillars and palmer worms and locusts have eaten. There will be a restoration. There will be a restoration. There is a woman under the sound of my voice, either in the house here or online, you are crying. While the word was going on, you were crying. You were crying and heaven had your cry. Oh my God. I, I saw in the spirit that you couldn't help your situation, but you cried in your heart to the Lord. If you are that woman in the, if you are in the house, I want you to come forward here. If you are not that woman in the house, if you are online, I want you to please note this. God has had your cry. <laughs> I said, God has had your cry. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that what you could not do for yourself and you cried over the matter today there will be a divine assistance there will be a divine shift mark wherever, mark wherever you are whatever is giving you pains from today we begin to give you gains whatever is giving you pains from today we begin to give you joy. An end has come to your travail. An end has come to your travail. An end has come to your travail. I speak by the authority of God's word. Shift in the name of Jesus. Shift in the name of Jesus. Shift in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. In your marriage. In your profession. In your business. In the office. In the life of your children. Shift in the name of Jesus. Nothing is allowed to hold you down. Today the yoke is broken. That same wind. That is blowing right now. The wind of the Holy Ghost. That breaks every yoke in the name of Jesus. It's a new face for you. It's a new face for you. It's a new face for you. For you, you me here today. It's not the same. You will look back. You will see the faithfulness of God in your life in the name of Jesus. Testimony. God has heard. God has blessed. Go in peace. You understand it in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. Somebody shout a loud amen. I don't know whether I came with a preacher of today from the same house. I don't know. But today. I'd like you to know that the word she brought reprogrammed my life. And if she did that to me, I know that he has done, God has done, used her to do the same for you. I'm, many of us have had an encounter tonight. You have had an encounter. Can we appreciate God's servant? Let's appreciate her. Let's appreciate her. Thank you.